Hello, Brian Boyle. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, Mike. How are you? I am fantastic. Well, it is so good to see you. I always say you've got that million dollar smile, which you do. Yeah. It's just a, a very infectious. You, you should be proud to be able to have that. Thank you. Well, Brian, I've called you the iron miracle because back in 2004, when you were in that horrific accident and they had no idea whether or not you were going to make it, your body was just crushed and mangled. You went through all kinds of surgeries. Even, even, People in the trauma said it's the worst non-fatal trauma they had ever seen in their lives. But you you came back. And one of the things that I think was really amazing was you told your dad when you were going through rehab, you were going to do an Ironman. And you really didn't know what that was. And your dad really didn't know what that was. Go Go through that with us. Growing up, you know, watching the Ironman every year on the broadcast, I was always so inspired by the amazing athletes, the stories, the inspiration. And I knew that one day I would want to do an Ironman triathlon. And on my deathbed, when I was in the ICU in a coma, when I woke up from the coma, it was about survival. It was about living each day, coming out of the coma, regaining consciousness, getting stronger. And I had those goals that I had to get better, leave the hospital and so forth. And the Ironman triathlon was that one goal that would help complete the healing process. And that was a big dream of mine my whole life. And then to go and actually do that race in 2007, after all that my parents and I went through, two months in ICU in a coma on life support, brought back to life eight times on the operating table, three years in recovery, and here I am in Kona, Hawaii, it was, I, I, I have chills as I, as I reflect back on that moment because it was such a triumphant day for my family, my parents, myself, and just to be there at the Ironman in Hawaii, the story came full circle and I was so, so full of life and so grateful. You know, we hear that a lot about people having that big goal of an Ironman, even though they're laying in a bed and they can hardly walk and get out. What do you think it is about Ironman and the Ironman family that draws you to that final peak, that, that, that time you climb that ladder to the very top. What do you think draws you to something like that? I think looking at the Ironman, you know, growing up and my, my first initial interest when I was five years old, when I first saw the Ironman on TV and I see the swim and how intense it is. And then you see the stories, you learn about the people who are doing this amazing sport and then you're a part of the sport and you see this amazing community of athletes, the dedication to world-class professionals, age group triathletes, everyone that's competing. They all have a story. They all have a background. There is something that inspired them in their life to want to go and compete in this amazing event. And for me, it's the ultimate. The Ironman is the ultimate test of human endurance, the ultimate test of the human spirit. You learn a lot about yourselves when you're, when you're out there in any Ironman race. 70.3 or full distance Ironman, you learn so much about what goes into the preparation, the training. When you're actually in the race itself, you're thinking, can I keep going at this pace? Can I go that extra mile? Can I complete the swim, the bike, the run? And when you see that finish line, all those what ifs, those doubts, those concerns, the, all those different scenarios that you had in your mind, from now on, when you're crossing that finish line, that, that dream is, is complete. And that to me is everything about what defines this sport is the inspiration, the motivation, and then the hard work to get to that finish line. Well, in 2007, when you did come across and came down a Lee drive and came through that finish line and, and, and Garth and Joanne, your mom and dad were there, the three of you were hugging. I thought one of you was going to explode for goodness sakes. And then the thought we all had, I hope Brian stays apart of our sport. And you did. You've done multiple 70.3s and Ironman races. We saw each other a few years ago at Ironman Maryland. And now all of a sudden, you're a dad. You've got Clara and Liam. And what you went through with all your unbelievable uh, recovery, and then all of a sudden you have Liam, you have your little son, and he's got a, a heart condition at birth, and he goes through three or four major surgeries. And I, it, it was it like, oh my gosh, we're, we're kind of going to, I kind of went through this. Now my son is going through this. what do you think about all that? Did, did you have any connection of those thoughts? That, that's a great question, Mike. And, and we did think about that quite a bit, especially when we first received the news at 20 weeks at the ultrasound that we were having a little boy and he would have a very critical form of congenital heart disease. 
we went through the next few months of going through the process of getting all the, the cardiac types, the scans, the, the measurements, MRIs, everything that was involved in that. There was no guarantee we would even make it to full term with, with, with Liam, but we stayed hopeful, we stayed positive. And when he was born last summer, August 21st, it was just an amazing day. And as we're going through these surgeries, open heart surgeries, and he's just a few days old, and I'm reflecting back on my situation when I was in ICU, in a coma, on life support, my parents are there begging me to stay strong. I'm now in my dad's shoes, looking at my son going through his own wow. experience, his own cardiac journey. And that motivated me. It, it, it gave me a different perspective of what my own patient experience was based on. Now my son's going through this. And I felt comforted knowing that he was in a place of healing, that he had a whole team of people praying for him, believing in him, supporting him. And, uh, and also with, with, with the background and the story and, and the Ironman, is especially the support that I received from the Ironman community was profound last year. That meant so much to me being an Ironman triathlete, an age group triathlete, having the support from the Ironman, from all the age groupers, the professionals, so many people rallying around my son, just a few days old, going through his first open heart surgery. It was a big deal. And, and from that point on, Liam earned the nickname Iron Man. So we had all our Iron Man types <laughs> of, uh, merchandise memorabilia shirts hats um everything that we had m dot was all over his hospital room because that was providing that inspiration that i knew from my own experience that i was trying to give to him as he was going through his own battle and his own struggles and you know liam's gonna go faster than you ever went at an iron man race you know that don't you <laughs> <laughs> that is the hope and he's so strong he's so talented and just for a he just turned one uh, last uh, last week, so he's just overcome so much, much more than what I've overcome in, in my own personal healthcare journey a few years ago. What I've seen him do and, and accomplish has just been so inspiring to me. Well, I've had the honor of meeting Clara and, and your wife, Pamela, and I can't wait to, to meet Liam. Uh, and the American Red Cross, you work for them, and obviously, you know, without you wanting it to happen, but the American Red Cross came to your side and they've been at your side ever since, and now you're working for them. It's been a dream come true. When I learned how many blood, blood transfusions I received when I was in ICU, I had so many questions. And when I heard about I had 36 blood transfusions and 13 plasma treatments, I vowed to myself that one day when I made a recovery, when I would leave the hospital, leave my wheelchair, and make a full recovery, I was going to be a Red Cross volunteer. And that was one month after I did the Ironman in 2007, when I had that full healing take place. I got back on my feet went to my first blood drive and became a Red Cross volunteer. And I've been a Red Cross volunteer and supporter and advocate ambassador for the past 13 years, as long as I've been an Ironman triathlete as well. Practicing what you preach, there's nothing better than that. Now you're in the VR Kona series. You know, you're like all those age groupers out there. You went through last weekend with the speed. Uh, I, I, you, you're looking forward to it. You're a little nervous about it. Tell us about your, your experience thus far. I think it's amazing. I'm so glad that we have this platform to, to pursue right now. I know it's a very difficult time. There's a lot of things that we can't control, but what we can control is being there for our families, our communities, ourselves, for our sport. As we're going through getting ready for what would be Kona, uh, Ironman Hawaii, to do this Ironman platform for the VR series for Kona, it's a, it's a phenomenal platform in my opinion. And I've been participating in the past few weeks. It's been great. I loved every minute of it. And it's also that challenge piece, because when you're training virtually or in person, you're, you're digging deep. You're, you're finding out what you're able to accomplish and, and, and set your mind to. And that's virtual. That's in person. It, it's that mindset to have those goals and to strive for accomplishing those goals. And as the weeks go by and you're seeing the, the response from that, you're seeing those, those noticeable results that are coming from that hard work and that training, that preparation, when you're out there in the actual race itself, whether it's virtual or in person, you're going to see that hard work pay off. And I think this is just a great series to be able to support that right now in this very challenging time. Yeah, you're so correct. Well, Brian, you know, you are an age grouper, like so many of your fellow family Ironman age groupers, and we all are going through a difficult time. But for some reason, you know, it seems to draw people closer together. We've always been a close-knit family, obviously, the Ironman family. What advice would you give to the age group men and women out there that are uh, probably, you know, might be struggling right now? It's challenging, but what I always reflect on, and this has been my years of training, my years of racing, and now training virtually, especially with not many races in person this year, unfortunately, I think about 
the why. I think about what inspired us to go into this sport to begin with. What was that moment in our life that wanted that, that really formed that kind of path for us to want to go and do an Ironman? And for me, it was my my childhood growing up, going through my own healthcare experience and so forth, and completing the healing process by doing the Ironman. That's my why. So we all have that that moment in our life, that inspiration, that why moment. So when times are tough, when challenging can be difficult and trying to find the time in the week to train, weekdays, weekends, so forth, it's reflecting back on that, that initial inspiration, that motivation, overcoming those obstacles, seeing how far you came along that journey and just keep it, keeping one foot in front of the other. And from that, progress will happen and dreams will be accomplished. Well, Brian, I, I can't, hopefully we get to see each other in 2021 at a Ironman start line and finish line and uh, all of us will be together again as one great big happy family. That's the plan. I'm looking forward to it, Mike. Okay. Brian Boyle, thank you very much. Keep it up, buddy. Say hi to the family. And as always, aloha. Thank you, Mike. Aloha. Thank you for everything. Thank you.